Kundalini energy in Mother Earth. Mm. Beautiful. Mm. <clears throat> ah, Kundalini. There's this uh, Kundalini in your breath. There's Kundalini. In fact, there is only Kundalini. There's nothing but Kundalini. Kundalini means goddess. Goddess means creative energy. She's not just in the earth. She's also in the stars. Kundalini means movement. Kundalini means constantly giving an opportunity to renew yourself. Kundalini means you're not stuck. Kundalini means, in fact, the, the right word for Kundalini, the right word for Kundalini is not Kundalini. It is Kala Kundalini. Kala Kundalini. Uh, let me just dive into this. When we say Kundalini by itself, as in the past, when you mention Kundalini, it means a stationary Kundalini. Kundalini itself means stationary. The right, when the Kundalini moves, she is known as Kala Kundalini. And this is collectively known as Kala. And let me just share this with you uh, before we go into, you know, uh, Mother Earth. And as I mentioned, she's everywhere. You know, when the flower blooms, why is that? There's Kundalini. Kundalini is the Kala Kundalini, is the moving energy. Uh, when you are stuck, it's called Kundalini. When you are bloomed, it's called Kala Kundalini. When you're stuck in your thoughts, you think you have to awaken it. You think she's asleep. And that's when she's stuck. That's when she's not awakened. But when she's awakened, she's known as Kala Kundalini. Kala Kundalini. When she is here, when only she moves from here down, okay? When she moves only in relation, when you see, when you talk, when you hear, when you express, when you touch, in relation to first, second, and third chakra. Survival, pleasure, and power. She is known as Bhoga Kundalini. And when she comes here, it is called Madha Kundalini. And when she comes here, she is known as Rasa Kundalini. And when she comes here, it is called Brahma Kundalini. Okay? So the other word, it's also used kala. Okay, kala. So here is one kala, the second kala, third kala, and then you have the fourth, which is the Brahma kala. Collectively, this is known as chardi kala. Chardi kala means awakening, activating the sleeping kundalini. She is everywhere and she's moving. When you are able to see the movement in everything, when you're able to find Shiva, Kundalini is the Shakti, the goddess. When you're able to find Shiva in every movement, this is, this, is, this is Shakti, this is Kundalini. This cannot happen if Kundalini was not in me. Okay? Ordinarily, we only see Kundalini. We only see Kala Kundalini. We only see Shakti. Okay, but when we start experiencing Shiva in Shakti, when, why is this hand moving? Because there's consciousness in me. The hand has no power by itself. When I can experience a Shiva consciousness, when I can start seeing consciousness in the blooming of the flower, when I can start experiencing consciousness, which is thus talked about in the movement of my tongue, when I can experience a Shiva consciousness in my sight, when I can experience consciousness in my food, and I eat consciously, 
I speak consciously. I hear consciously. I see consciously. I touch consciously. I walk consciously. I have now experienced the Shiva within Shakti. And that is actually what it means, awakening of the uh, Kundalini. She's everywhere. And specifically, uh, there are some points where she's active the most. And according to the sages of the past, it is the whole Himalayan range. Uh, that's where her face is, but her tail is moving everywhere. Okay. Wherever the tail moves away, fights, clashes, natural disasters happen. And wherever her tail goes, awakening, consciousness happens. That's why you see every sacred space, every location on the earth, there's a time when it's blooming and suddenly there are a lot of issues and problems come. And then once a while she coils herself back into the Himalayas and then the whole humanity suffers. We call it world wars. She's everywhere. Well, just like this is everywhere. But then there are specific points in the body where she can be experienced more. As you can, I'm just, I'm just saying she's everywhere, yet I'm saying she's in specific point because this, she's Kundalini, she's the goddess. You cannot define her in a special location. At the same time, you cannot say she's everywhere. And there's a contradiction in both my sentences and that's how you can explain Kundalini. You cannot say she's like that. Then what is this then? If Kundalini is this, then what is this? So she's everywhere in the blinking of my eye, to the pumping of my heart, to the movement of my tongue, to the blooming of the flower, to the wave of the oceans. She's everywhere. And there's no specific location. But yet, I'm going to contradict myself, contradict myself. They say her head, her crown. is in the mighty Himalayas. Only Himalayas can carry her crown. And she's so vast. She's so deep. Yeah, she's the ultimate. And she's also known as Bhagavati. Pratham Bhagavati. That's her name. Her head, her crown, her face rests. Only the Himalayas can carry her weight. And then she moves her tail. And maybe sometime back her tail was in US and now her tail had moved away. A lot of problems coming and then in China. And then she coiled herself for some time. I think she's still more or less coiled. And when we collectively invoke her by chanting, the creative force, that's what I'm talking about. Pratham Bhagavati Simrata. The creative energy, ah, the Shakti, that's what she is. And we, we invoke her, everybody invoke her by becoming conscious, by bringing purity to your tongue, by bringing purity to your eyes. Becoming conscious of what you eat, not killing innocent lives for this. Mm. When you invoke devotion, when you have reverence, it's called Bhakti Yoga. When you can touch the trees without your story, just touching the trees as they are, know that you are invoking the goddess. When you can bow to the rising sun, know that you are invoking Kundalini, Kala Kundalini. She's everywhere, uh, her sacred space, her sacred house, her sacred crown is in the Himalayas, I think that's it.